Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on German political parties. So today's episode was requested by Victor Escaranja on YouTube and someone on my feedback and request form. If you want me to do another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, or put a request in the feedback and request form in the description. I currently have requests to do Zimbabwean parties, Moldovan parties, South Korean parties, Moroccan parties, Chilean parties, Swiss parties, Kazakh parties, Iranian parties, Mexican parties, Slovenian parties, and many more. Let's start off by talking about some important geographic divisions in Germany. After World War II, Germany was divided between West Germany, run under a liberal democratic system, and East Germany, run under a one-party communist state. While in 1990 the two states were joined together, serious divides still exist between West and East Germany, with regional tension between the two, and the East economically lagging behind the West. Politically, this results in the West and East tending to vote differently, as the West tends to vote more moderate and pro-status quo, while the East tends to vote more radical and anti-establishment. Although German political parties often do have supporters and strongholds on both sides of the West-East divide. There also is a geographic division around religion. Southern Germany was historically more Catholic, while Northern Germany was historically more Protestant. Meanwhile, parts of former East Germany are more likely to be atheist, owing to communist influence in the region. This has partially impacted the political parties, as the two major parties of Germany, the SPD and the CDU, have historically had their support base at least partially tied to the Protestant Catholic divide. However, a growing number of Germans are becoming less and less religious, so it seems this Protestant Catholic divide is lessening as religion is becoming less important. Right now, Germany's at a point where there's a lot of dissatisfaction with the status quo, or at least the current situation in Germany. The current coalition, made up of the SPD, the Greens, and the FDP, are all facing backlash as the coalition has been racked with infighting and corruption. This has seen the three ruling parties suffer in state elections and take a beating in the polls. One of the biggest beneficiaries for this is the AFD, probably the most radical party in the German parliament which has reached a historic high of 22% in polling. And a big problem facing every major party right now is infighting, as different factions of every party are arguing about whether they should become more principled or moderate. This shows that dissatisfaction is high right now, and just about everyone is upset in some way with how German parties are currently operating. I'm sure you want me to get into the parties, but first let's just briefly go over Germany's political system. Germany is a federation, divided up into 16 states. Each state has its own regional government and parliament, or Landtag. So throughout the episode, I'll talk about the party's presence at the regional level. The German parliament is divided between two houses. The more important body is the Bundestag. The Bundestag is made up of 598 members on paper, but due to Germany's electoral system often has far more, with right now the Bundestag being made up of 736 deputies. Deputies are elected via two ways. 299 are elected from 299 constituencies found throughout the country, with whichever candidate getting the most votes in that constituency's constituency vote becoming that constituency's deputy. The remaining deputies are elected via proportional representation, which aims to make the Bundestag proportional to how the German population voted, and they will add extra deputies, which is why the Bundestag's number of seats can fluctuate. In order to get proportional seats, a party must either get 5% of the vote from the party list vote, or must win at least three different constituency seats. Also, parties representing the Frisian, Danish, Sorb, or Roma minority may ignore the threshold. The Bundestag will vote on rules and regulations, and will elect the Chancellor, the most powerful political figure in the country, the President, who serves as the more ceremonial figure, and the Federal Constitutional Court. The second body is the Bundesrat. The Bundesrat is made up of 69 delegates who are elected from 16 state governments of Germany. States will send a different number of delegates depending on how large their population is, with the smallest states sending only three, while the larger states sending six. The Bundesrat's powers seem a little complicated, but it seems every bill will be reviewed by the Bundesrat, and can be rejected, although if the bill is voted on again with over 50% of the vote from the Bundestag, it will become law. However, bills that affect the states or constitution require approval from both houses. The Bundesrat overall represents the interest of the states, while the Bundestag represents the interest of the people. The Bundesrat tends to be more dominated by the establishment parties, or those parties that can work their way into state government, and the Bundesrat is a weaker body. Germany is a member of the EU, 
sending 96 members to EU Parliament, the most out of any country. Notably, Germany uses a electoral threshold of only 0.6% of the EU Parliament vote, so they tend to have a larger number of parties present in the EU than in the Bundestag. Finally, just going to recommend two YouTube videos if you are curious more on German parties. First, there is another video on German parties by Lukas Binder, who is actually from Germany, who explains German parties, similar to me, talking about the overall themes in each party. But I will touch up on more parties and also try to dig a little deeper. There also is a video from a channel called Radical Living, which makes fun of most of the major German parties, including some small parties I won't talk about this video. While this video is obviously comedic, it does help illustrate some of the main stereotypes surrounding the parties. I'll link both videos in the description. So let's begin talking about the German parties. First off, we have the largest ruling party, the Social Democratic Party of Germany, or Social Democratische Partei Deutschland. My German is not very good. Or SPD. SPD is a center-left Social Democratic Party. It was founded back in 1875 and served in the German Empire as the main leftist party in the country. During the Weimar Republic, after the more radical wings of the party split off, it became one of the leading parties in the country and was the main center-left party in the country before being banned by the Nazis. After World War II, it in West Germany again served as the major center-left party in the country, operating in several governments and always being the first or second most voted for party in the country. Its support base is generally stereotyped as being working class, however, this support base has somewhat retreated in recent years. The party does, however, get a large amount of support from older voters, pensioners, civil servants, those in urban areas, Protestants to a certain extent, and in northern and western Germany broadly. Its position as reformist and a part of the ruling political class means it is supported by those who want a pragmatic, left-leaning party that won't stray too far from the status quo, but still backs social solidarity. It has 206 deputies in the Bundestag, 22 delegates in the Bundesrat, is a part of the government in 11 states and is present in the remaining five, and sends 16 members to EU Parliament, who sit in the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats. It is headed by Saskia Eskin and Lars Klingbeil, both deputies, also the Chancellor and President of Germany, Olaf Scholz and Frank Walter Steinmeier are both members of the SPD. The SPD is like many other center-left parties in Europe, supportive of a welfare state, socially liberal, and in favor of Western integration. It wants a social market economy, wants to raise the minimum wage, and wants more funding to go towards education and healthcare. It also opposes raising the pension age above 67, wants to expand the period people receive unemployment benefits, supports progressive taxes, and wants to build more affordable housing. It is socially progressive, arguing for the voting age to be lower to 16, wants to invest more in solar and wind power, and is opposed to xenophobia in Germany. It is pro-EU and pro-NATO, although certain wings of the party are seen as being more geopolitically neutral. I say this pretty much every time I talk about social democrat parties in Europe, but the SPD is suffering from infighting, seen as being too stuck in the past, and being too right for the left and too left for the right. Right-wingers see the SPD as a party that just raises taxes and then governs incompetently, while historically the party was very popular among the German working class, stuff like the Agenda 2010 reforms, which was a series of SPD-led reforms that sought to reduce the welfare state, caused the SPD to bleed working class and leftist support, and the party has failed to receive over 30% of the vote since the 2009 election. This has led to infighting in the party as the more left-wing and centrist wing of the party have duked it out, even leading to a large break-off in 2005. While the good election result the SPD received last election might be a sign things are looking up, this good result was seen more as its rivals doing poorly rather than it doing well. The party is just seen more and more as the party that lacks any new innovative ideas and is seen as representing old, outdated thinking that can't come up with anything new. Also, the party has been accused of corruption. The next party in the ruling coalition is Alliance 90 slash the Greens, or Bundes 90 de Grün. The Greens are an environmentalist party, embracing center-left and progressive policy, mostly focused on the environments, but also expanding out to other issues. The party was formed as a merger of the West and East German Green parties, along with the East German group known as Alliance 90, which was an anti-communist pro-democracy group. The Greens, while initially looked at as a fringe group of radicals, began to become more mainstream and moderate after serving with an SPD government in the late 90s to mid-2000s. It has become very powerful in Germany, often playing a part in many regional governments throughout Germany, even with the conservative CDU, albeit 
often not as the head of most governments. Its support base is often younger progressives found generally in urban areas, particularly in the West, Berlin, and Baden-Württemberg. Its supporters are also more likely to be well-educated and make more, and women seem to support the party more. It overall is seen as a party for those who care deeply about the environment and or are young progressive activisty types who don't want to vote for the more traditional SPD. It has 118 deputies in the Bundestag, 19 delegates in the Bundesrat, is a part of the government in every state, with the exception of mecklenburg vorpommern Saxony-Anhalt, Berlin, Bavaria, and the Saarland which is also the only state it isn't present in the regional parliament, and sends 21 members to EU parliament, who sit in the green slash European Free Alliance group. It is currently headed by Ricardo Long and Omen Nuripur, both deputies. The Greens' main focus is unsurprisingly on the environment. It is hostile towards nuclear power, wants to get rid of coal power energy by 2030, is supportive of raising the carbon tax, wants to do more to encourage riding a bicycle rather than driving a car, and wants to expand protected natural habitats. It also is generally progressive, wanting to raise the minimum wage, wants to make it easier for migrants to become German citizens, backs progressive taxes, and supports greater LGBTQ rights. It is pro-EU, and while historically they were considered pacifist, they in recent years have become more and more open to a foreign policy that aligns with NATO and opposes Russia and China. The Greens change from a party representing radical environmentalism to a more palatable widespread party that focuses on the environment and the baggage around that change is probably one of the biggest things that create dislike for the party. More traditionally minded voters still see the Greens as too unrealistic or inexperienced to actually run a government on their own, which is why the Greens have so rarely governed any state as the head of a state coalition. This also partially explains why the Greens went from being one of the most popular parties in 2020 and 2021 to right before the election dropping down to third place. Meanwhile, within the party, there is a vicious fight between those that want the party to return to its more principled days and shun the party for selling out and working with the right, while the more moderate wing wants the party to moderate even more, hoping a more moderate Green Party can push through much needed environmental changes. As the current government has seen infighting over taxes and environmental policy, the Greens have suffered in regional elections alongside its other federal coalition partners. The party also has been accused of corruption, of being a party that is constantly trying to push unpopular environmental changes on the German consumer, such as introducing a surcharge on gas bills, and its more progressive social policy have led a lot of social conservatives and nationalists to despise the party, directing much of their anger towards them and their supporters. Finally, the last party in the coalition is the Free Democratic Party, or Freie Demokratische Partei, or FDP. The FDP is a center-right liberal party. It was formed after World War II and served as the middle ground between the two major German political parties. It often served as kingmaker, helping prop up governments from the larger parties while controlling certain ministries. It in recent years has somewhat leaned towards being an ally of the conservatives, but they still work with the SPD, as evidenced by the current coalition. Its support base is often made up of the wealthy in Germany, such as business owners or high-paying professionals. It also receives more support among men, younger voters, and gets more support in the West, especially in Baden-Württemberg, Hesse, and Schleswig-Holstein, although also somewhat in the East German state of Saxony. It's the party overall for voters who want a moderate, pragmatic party in office, but also those who want less taxes and less government overall. It currently has 92 deputies, two delegates, is present in 11 state parliaments, and is a part of the government in Saxony-Anhalt and Rhineland-Palatinate, and sends five members to EU Parliament, who sit in the Renew Europe group. It is currently headed by Christian Lindner, a deputy and minister of finance. The FTB's big goal is less government. It is in favor of further privatization and deregulation, opposes raising taxes overall, although they do support a global minimum tax, and talks about trusting, quote, in the self-determination of consumers, unquote. Socially, it supports the legalization of cannabis, supports no speed limit on the Autobahn, favors more skilled immigrants to enter the country, and wants to do more to protect people's privacy online. It is pro-EU, supporting a EU army, although it is opposed to further bureaucratic regulations on the EU level. It also is pro-NATO, wants to create a ministry of digitization, wants to incentivize going into a trade, wants more responsibility devolved to the municipal level, and wants pensions to give more money the longer a person works. The FDP's big problem is they are an economically liberal party in government with center-left parties. This means it tends to clash with its coalition partners on several issues, making it hard for the coalition to govern. 
It also means a decent chunk of its support base last election has abandoned it, with it dropping in opinion polls and getting wiped out in regional elections. However, ironically, the FTP may be one of the parties with the least amount of infighting, just owing to the fact that a large chunk of FTP voters aren't actually long-term supporters of the party, usually just people that will vote for the FTP one time only, and then go on to back some other party or just not vote often, if at all. This lack of hardcore supporters, at least compared to the other parties, has made it so the FTP has pretty much never won a federal constituency in an election. One reason for this may be because the FTP was in the kingmaker position in the 50s and 90s, which made the FTP appear spineless and power-hungry. The FTP is also seen as just the party for the rich, and only caring about corporations and a free market, while not thinking about those worse off in society. All these problems have made it so in recent years the FTP has struggled to hold on to its dominant position, and even in the 2013 federal election, failed to pass the 5% threshold. So that ends the ruling coalition, and we will now go through the opposition parties, starting with the other major party in Germany, the Christian Democratic Union of Germany, or Christliches Demokratisches Union Deutschland, or CDU. The CDU is a Christian Democratic, Conservative, and center-right party, it is heavily based around Christian ideals, but is an a theocratic party. It was formed after World War II, and since then has been the leading right-leaning party in the country. Angela Merkel, the longtime chancellor of Germany, was a member of the party, leading the CDU to dominate German politics in the 2000s and 2010s. It has been in government with mostly the FDP, but they have actually formed federal governments with their rivals, the SPD, and at the state level have worked with the Greens. Its support base is generally seen as being made up of older Germans, more devout Christians, particularly in areas with a large Catholic population, somewhat more well-off Germans, and does well in southern Germany. It also is stereotyped as a rural party, but it actually can hold its own in certain cities, like Stuttgart, Frankfurt, and western Berlin. It overall is a party for those who want a pragmatic, right-leaning party, or a party that centers Christian values. It currently has 152 deputies, 18 delegates, is a part of the government in 8 states, and is present in every other regional parliament, except Bavaria, and sends 23 members to EU parliament, who sit in the European People's Party group. It is currently headed by Friedrich Merz, a deputy and former member of EU parliament. The CDU is seen as generally economically liberal and socially conservative. The CDU is hostile towards Germany taking on more debt, is hostile towards increased taxation, especially progressive taxes, favors more deregulation in the economy, although still supporting a social market economy. It is hostile towards same-sex couples adopting children, wants to limit the number of immigrants entering into Germany, and supports tough-on-crime laws. It is pro-EU and pro-NATO, with the CDU historically helping found both organizations. The CDU also supports decreasing the size of the Bundestag and was a crackdown on CP on the internet. As dissatisfaction with the current coalition has increased, the CDU has seen some success in regional elections and in opinion polls, but the CDU is certainly not a growing party. Much like the SPD, the CDU is looked at as a party for traditional political elites and is out of touch with much of the population. The CDU is looked at from the left as a party that is in the pocket of big businesses and the rich. Meanwhile, it has lost its more right-wing street cred as it has worked with left-leaning parties like the SPD and the Greens, and under Merkel's leadership, moderated. Her handling of the migrant crisis led right-wingers to accuse her of letting too many in, while the left accused her of not having Germany take its fair share and letting those migrants suffer elsewhere. The party also being the partial founder of the EU and NATO have led a lot of anti-EU and anti-Western forces to particularly despise the party. This has led to a lot of infighting as the more moderate and conservative factions of the party have duked it out over the direction the party should go. The party also is seen as quite corrupt and removed from the average person, with these last reasons being a big reason the party lost in 2021. Now you may have noted that the CDU isn't present in Bavaria. Is it because Bavaria is the most anti-CDU state in the country, so the CDU just can't get a foothold there? Well, no. Because actually, there is another center-right conservative party, the Christian Social Union in Bavaria, or Christlike Social Union in Bayern, or CSU. Historically, Bavaria was considered a region with a very different culture than the rest of Germany, aligning much more with the Austrians. So throughout the Weimar Republic, Bavaria had its own conservative Catholic party, the Bavarian People's Party, that dominated politics in the region. After World War II, the CSU was set up and quickly aligned itself with the CDU, serving essentially as the CDU's regional outfit in the state. The CSU has dominated Bavarian politics, with it always emerging as the most voted for party and almost continually governing Bavaria since 1958. 
In terms of differences between the CSU and CDU, the CSU is looked at as a bit more conservative and more devoutly Catholic, but both parties largely occupy the same space ideologically. It gets the most support in rural regions, particularly in the north and along the Czech border. It currently has 42 deputies, 4 delegates, is the ruling party in Bavaria, and sends 6 members to EU Parliament, who sit in the European People's Party group. It is headed by Markus Suder, the Minister President of Bavaria and Member of State Parliament. Next we go to the furthest right party in the Bundestag, with the Alternative for Germany, or Alternative for Deutschland, or AFD. AFD is a hard right to far right party, representing a combination of nationalist, right wing populist, and dissident conservatives. It was formed in 2013 as a break off of the CDU, along with several economists and activists representing conservatives hostile towards the euro and further EU integration. It in the mid 2010s began to embrace more nationalistic ideas and was seen as the main anti-immigrant, anti-Islam, anti-EU right-wing party in the country. It has really risen in recent years to become a very loud anti-establishment voice in Germany, making large gains in federal and regional elections. Its support base is seen largely as being made up of dissatisfied men, primarily from eastern Germany. It also to a lesser extent does well in southern Germany, and among those who earn less. It is seen as a party for both those dissatisfied with the status quo in Germany and want a change, but also among very nationalistic and right-wing Germans. It currently has 81 deputies, is present in every state parliament, with the exception of Schleswig-Holstein and Bremen, and sends 11 members to EU parliament, who sit in the Identity and Democracy group. It is currently headed by Tino Coppola and Alice Weidel, both deputies. AFD is very focused on questions around the German nation and is quite socially conservative. It is strongly opposed to increased immigration into Germany, particularly from Muslim countries. Many in the party reject man-made climate change. It supports tough on crime laws and more deportations. It is hostile towards gender ideology and is pro-gun rights. Economically, it is divided between a more free market and economically status wing, but generally wants to lower taxes for families, wants to deregulate the construction industry so they can build more houses, and wants to limit the number of people receiving welfare so only Germans have access to it. It wants Germany to leave the EU and the Eurozone, and wants Germany to be on more friendly terms with Russia. It also wants to make German the national language of the country, is opposed to GMOs in German agriculture, and supports more referendums based on the Swiss model. The AFD is perhaps the most controversial party in the country. It is seen by all other parties as racist, xenophobic, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, homophobic, and just hateful. It is seen as so toxic, as a matter of fact, there is a cordon sanitaire around the party. When the CDU in Thuringia at one point tried to work with the AFD, there was significant backlash, resulting in several high-profile CDU politicians to resign across the country. Parts of the AFD are monitored by the German state for anti-democratic activities, being accused of being ideologically friendly or just out-and-out -out being white nationalist or neo-Nazi. The xenophobia that permeates the party has made it hated by the German political establishment and much of the general public. This has created some division in the party, as some parts of the party have argued they should try to moderate to become more accepted by the wider political establishment. There is a pretty frequent phenomenon of AFD elected politicians leaving the party quickly after entering office and saying, wow, I didn't realize how right-wing this party was, and then setting up their own rival right-wing outfits, some of whom we will talk about later. The AFD is also seen as being very conspiratorial in any criticism they receive, saying it's a plot by the media or the state to discredit them, and of allegedly holding ties to the Russian government. While the AFD's rise in opinion polls and the CDU opening up the possibility of lifting the Corning Sanitaire are signs that the party is looking up, an AFD-backed federal government, and even a regional government, looks unlikely. And apparently, many Germans that are backing the AFD now are doing so less because they like the party, and more as a protest of the current ruling coalition. So once that coalition is dead, the support may halt. The last major party takes us to the opposite side of the political spectrum, with the left, or Der Linke. The left can trace its origins to the ruling party of East Germany, the Socialist Unity Party. After the fall of communism, the Socialist Unity Party rebranded itself as the Party of Democratic Socialism, mostly relegated to the East until 2007 when it merged with a leftist breakoff of the SPD to form the Left. It became an important player in German politics spreading throughout Western Germany. It, however, as I will talk about later, has been retreating back East. It ideologically is a combination of leftist ideas ranging from dissident social democrats and trade unionists to people wishing for the return of communism, so it has been labeled a variety of things ranging from center-left to far-left. 
Its support base is mostly found in the east, particularly in the state of Thuringia. While it is weak in the west, it does have some small strongholds, mostly in the Saarland, urban areas, and among younger women. It is seen as a party for leftist and Marxist activists and academics and trade unionists, but also just for older East Germans who are frustrated with the reunification of the East and West. It currently has 39 deputies, three delegates, is a part of the government in mecklenburg vorpommern Bremen, and Thuringia, is present in another six state parliaments, and sends five members to EU Parliament, who sit in the left of EU Parliament group. It is currently headed by Janine Wessler, a deputy, and Martin Schurdevon, a member of EU Parliament. The less policy is left. It backs free education and free daycare, wants to raise the minimum wage, wants to reduce the working hours per week, wants more vacation days, supports universal basic income, wants to lower the retirement age to 65, and backs progressive taxes. It is strongly opposed to the deportation of refugees, supports cannabis legalization, wants to crack down on neo-Nazi groups, supports reducing the power of the police, reducing the wage gap between men and women and cis people and queer people, and wants a ban on animal testing. It is hostile toward the German military sending troops abroad, is anti-NATO, favoring a new collective security agreement with all of Europe, and wants to expand infrastructure across Europe and wants the EU parliament to be strengthened while opposing austerity cuts at the EU level and the Fortress Europe policy. It also supports antitrust policy, wants to nationalize the telecommunications industry, wants more referendums in Germany, wants more money to go towards municipal governments, and wants to abolish the Office of the Protection of the Constitution. A big reason the left likely wants to abolish this office is because the German state actually monitors certain parts of the party for being extremist and anti-democratic. Many on the right in particular view the party as an extremist outfit that should be shunned similar to how the AFD is. However, among the SPD and the Greens, there is an openness to working with the left, which they have done so on several occasions. Still, the left being the furthest left party in the Bundestag means the party is often viewed with hostility from the more moderate German political elite, and they tend to view a lot of the party's proposals as unrealistic. The party's ties to the Socialist Unity Party also create problems, as the ills of the East German state are often blamed on the party, and while technically operating throughout the country, outside of the East, especially in recent years, it often does very badly. Finally, the party also has probably the worst infighting out of all of the major parties, it is divided between its more reformist and more revolutionary wing, its pro-Russian and pro-NATO wing, and its more socially progressive wing, and a wing of the party that wants a more socially conservative, economically leftist party that decries wokeness in the party. All this combined has resulted in the left losing ground in recent years, and last election they actually failed to pass the 5% threshold, only making it into the Bundestag by virtue of winning three constituency seats. In opinion polls, it, unlike the other opposition parties, hasn't really been growing, remaining dangerously close to losing its already dwindling federal influence. While it's unlikely the left will completely disappear due to its presence in state parliaments and strong support in eastern cities, it may become more and more of a minor party. And speaking of minor parties, this is where the episode will start to turn to. The last six to seven parties are major players in Germany, and if you follow German politics, these are the parties that will be coming up again and again, and you have to pay attention to. The next couple parties aren't as important, but I'd say they do play an important role in certain circumstances and in certain states. So first off, we have the last party with a presence in the Bundestag, the South Schleswig Voter Association, or, and this is going to be rough, the Süd Schleswig Wählerverband or SSW. The SSW is a party representing the interest of the Danish and Frisian minority in the state of Schleswig-Holstein. It emerged after World War II, contesting federal elections until 1961, before taking a several decade leave of absence from federal politics. In 2021, it contested the federal election, getting its first federal deputy in years. While nationally it won an unimpressive 0.1% of the vote, it does do better in state elections itself, even getting over the 5% threshold last state election. The party does best in the north along the border with Denmark, which is where the Danish and Frisian minority is mostly located. Its electorate is also considered younger, more working class, and more rural. It currently has one deputy, and is present in the Schleswig-Holstein parliament, serving as opposition. It is currently headed by Christian Duschauer, a member of state parliament. The SSW is considered centrist politically. It describes on its website how it favors a political model similar to the Scandinavian countries, favoring more renewable energy, and more investment in education and the welfare state. It also favors a more decentralized state with more power at the local level, and wants to protect the Danish and Frisian language in the state. It, in 2012, for the first time ever, entered into state government with the SPD and the Greens, which may mean it is more friendly towards these parties. 
The last party present in the federal parliament at any level is the Free Voters, or Freie Wähler, or FW. FW can trace its origins to several different civic groups called the Free Voter Associations in West Germany, representing independents or those without political labels to participate in local politics. Starting roughly around the 2000s, some Free Voter groups began to form under a single united party, although even today it seems the party is largely decentralized. It largely came to focus on fighting for more powers at the local level, taking power away from political parties and returning them to the people, and backing direct democracy. The party tends to be labeled as conservative and described itself on its website as, quote, bourgeoisie liberal and independent and conservative. It has seen pretty strong growth over the past couple of years, going from a mostly small local outfit to getting over a million votes in the last federal election, although not enough to make it into the Bundestag. It does best generally in the rural south, especially in eastern Bavaria. It currently has two delegates in the Bundesrat, is a part of the government in Bavaria, is present in the Rhineland, Palatinate, and Brandenburg state parliaments, and sends two members to EU parliament, who sit in the Renew Europe group. It is currently headed by Hubert Iwangar, a member of the Bavarian Parliament and Minister of Economic Affairs in Bavaria. FW is big on delegating more power to the local level. It supports more referendums, wants more local history classes in schools, and wants to strengthen municipal governments. It is seen as conservative socially, favoring stricter immigration, and are seen as slightly Eurosceptic, opposing European-wide debt, and wanting less power to go towards EU bureaucrats, although they also favor a direct election of the EU federal president. It also backs more investment in daycare, affordable housing, and into small businesses. The last minor party is the Alliance Germany Party, or Bundesdeutschland. Alliance was formed in 2022 as a merger of several different right-wing politicians that defected from their own respected political parties, attempting to style itself as a right-wing party more principled than the CDU, but not as extreme as the AFD. An ex-AFD MEP joined the party, giving it representation in EU Parliament, and in 2023, working with the Citizens in Rage Party in Bremen, managed to win seats in the state parliament. All this may be signs that the party is a new minor force that may compete with the other major parties similar to FW. However, it's also important to note that over the years, many ex-AFD politicians have tried to form their own principled but not extreme right-wing political outfits, and really none of them have done very well. Also, its success in Bremen was mostly caused by the fact that the AFD was disqualified from running due to infighting in the local AFD branch that prevented a united electoral list from being submitted, so many AFD supporters moved over to Citizens in Rage. So on paper, they are somewhat notable and important, but we'll see how long they last. They are present in the Bremen State Parliament, and its one MEP sits in the European Conservative and Reformist Group. It is headed by Stefan Gosser, a former civil servant from Saxony. Alliance Germany is socially conservative and opposes a powerful EU. It wants Germany to oppose a dogmatic foreign policy and seeks to free the world of war and crisis. It calls on more power to be given at the national level rather than the European level. It also backs tough on crime laws, protecting Germany's Christian cultural and regional identity, lowering taxes, and reducing the bureaucracy. That ends the parties who you can argue have some impact at the federal or state level, and the remaining parties are all pretty small and all only have a single seat in EU Parliament. The first of these parties is the party, or Die Partei. Die Partei is a satirical party, formed in 2004 by a series of comedy writers to make fun of German political parties. The party often contests races with silly policy goals like, like making sure the German military has 53 billion in funding so the Greens can't just give them environmentally friendly drones, making sure tax evasion remains affordable, calling for the postponing of war with Russia and China, setting up a beer price break, and says Germany has to take in as many refugees as those killed in the Mediterranean. It also said it would form a coalition with any party, except the FDP, because the FDP are too silly. Its satire is mostly pointed at the establishment and right, and has been described as left-wing in its outlook. It made some gains over the past couple years, winning 2% in EU elections in 2019, and managing to win 1% of the vote in the 2021 federal election, doing best in eastern Berlin, the rhine ruhr Valley, and generally in urban areas. It also apparently, according to one Vice News article, does best among men, but this is because the party allegedly has a problem with sexually harassing its female staffers. The party also had one of its MEPs defect in 2021 over its party leader doing blackface and not apologizing. The party's one MEP is also its leader, Martin Sonnibor. Well, that fun party ended on a dark note, so let's go next to the Ecological Democratic Party, 
or Ecologist Demokratische Partei, or ODP. ODP is often defined as a green conservative party, embracing socially conservative positions along with arguing for more action on climate change. The party was formed from a CDU deputy who wanted tougher action on climate change, along with environmentalists who felt like the Greens were too left-wing in the 80s. It initially was accused by its opponents of being eco-fascist, but in the 90s, after some internal infighting, it moderated and emerged as the Green Conservative Party it is today. It is opposed to raising the electoral threshold for EU seats, it is opposed to nuclear power, opposes animal testing, wants more funding to go towards flood relief and protection, and argues for a green social market economy with a strong market. It also historically was very opposed to abortion and euthanasia. It is mostly based in southern Bavaria, particularly among older Catholics and more educated people. Its one MEP sits in the green slash European Free Alliance group. It is headed by Charlotte Schmidt, an environmental activist. Next there is the Family Party of Germany, or Familienparty Deutschland. The Family Party described itself as a part of the political center and tends to focus on making life easier for German families. However, the party also gets described as conservative a lot due to its friendliness with other conservative parties. It argues parents should have more influence over how their child is taught, particularly supporting homeschooling, wants to give money to stay-at-home parents to help cover cost, wants to give more tax breaks for families overall, is in favor of term limits, and is actually in favor of child suffrage. But it's the parents who are the ones voting for their children, so effectively, if you have kids, you have extra votes. The family party historically did best in eastern Germany, but last election in 2021 only fielded one candidate in Bremen. Its single MEP is Hemant Goiking, the leader of the party who sits in the European People's Party group. The next party I've actually talked about a couple times on the show, Volt Europa. Volt is a pan-European movement that wants to turn the EU into one singular country. It has branches all over the EU and outside the EU, and I've talked about them in my Dutch and Bulgarian parties episode. Volt, besides arguing for a federal Europe, is also pro-NATO, favors more investment in renewable energy, and is progressive socially. Volt tends to be backed by younger, more educated people, mostly found in the urban parts of the West or South. I'd also say Volt tends to be supported more by young, wonky, online liberal types. Its one MEP sits in the green slash European Free Alliance group. Its leaders are Laura Newman and Tim Martin. The last party to actually win a seat in EU Parliament in 2019 was the Pirate Party of Germany, or Piratenpartie Deutschland. The pirates are a pirate party, which means it supports stuff like protecting open access of the internet, copyright law reform, and promoting e-democracy. It also backs stuff like universal basic income, greater transparency, and is pro-EU. The party actually briefly seemed like it would become a major player in German politics, winning several state elections in the early 2010s, and opinion polls in 2013 showed it might win as high as 13% of the vote. This support base was a combination of young, highly educated, internet-savvy men, but also people just protesting the current political system. However, before the 2013 election, the party lost a lot of support via a combination of infighting, failure to present a clear united message, being almost entirely male-dominated, and being seen as political amateurs who had no idea what they were doing. It got the most support in 2021 in Hamburg, Dresden, and the state of Brandenburg. Its one MEP sits in the green slash European Free Alliance group. Its leader is Anna Herpertz, a university student. Finally, the last party is actually a bit of a strange one. The German Centre Party, or Deutsche Zentrumspartei, was historically a very important party in Germany, often playing a major role in governments in the German Empire, the Weimar Republic, and even had some success after World War II. It was seen as the main Catholic Christian Democratic Party in Germany, serving as the middle ground between the Social Democrats and Conservatives. They also infamously helped the Nazis take power in Germany by voting for the Enabling Act, giving the Nazis almost dictatorial power. However, since 1957, Zentrum hasn't won a single seat in the Bundestag, becoming a very fringe party, with less than a thousand party members. However, in 2022, a couple of AFD politicians joined the party, briefly giving the party representation in the Bundestag, and Zentrum currently holds a seat in EU Parliament. Will the party see a revival? Well, like Alliance Germany, many ex-AFD politicians have tried to form their own political outfits, and they usually don't do very well, so most likely not. This period in Zentrum history is more than likely a footnote. The current party leader is Christian Otto, a city councillor from Haast. So those are the parties of Germany. In conclusion, there is the current ruling coalition, which is made up of the SPD, the traditional center-left, the Greens, who are environmentalist, and the FDP, which is kind of a combination of centrist and small government liberals, while the opposition is made up of the CDU slash CSU, the traditional center-right, the AFD, the populist and nationalist right, the left, the socialist, and several different small minor parties. 
German parties are on paper the standard European parties, with many parties in other countries often being compared to the German parties. But once you dive deeper, you'll find a lot of unique features the German parties and the party system have that sets them apart from other countries in the EU and beyond. So, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Up next, I will talk about Zimbabwean parties. I've actually already mostly written the script for that one, I just have to finish um, some small minor parties at the end. So hopefully that'll be out, like, within, I don't know, maybe a week of releasing this one. I know I'm going camping, so that might delay it a little bit, but, uh... Yeah, that, will, that one should be out soon, and then I will talk about the history of Taiwan, finishing up my uh, my history of China series, and then I will talk about Moldovan parties. So yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, if you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I have a wonderful rest of your day.